And we will call the meeting to order. Uh, review the agenda for additions, removals, or adjustments of any items. Anything, Valerie? Yes. Um, under item eight, uh, where we have the annual certificate of highway mileage, it's listed on the agenda as without changes, but it turns out as of today, uh, we were able to uh, go through the process to have Firehouse Drive, the new extension of Firehouse Drive, added. So an updated certificate is on the website. Uh, it's printed on your table for your signatures. Uh, if, 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 in fact, when we get there, you approve it. Okay. So well, that's with Firehouse Drive. Mm hmm Anything else? Not that I could think of. Ready then. Uh, overview of Zoom meeting operations and procedures, rules for participation. Please mute your microphones, wait to be called on to speak. Uh, everybody's pretty clear with that by now. Hopefully one of us will recognize you and call on you. If not, then you can start hollering. Public forum, opportunity for Persons not on the agenda, briefly share comments or concerns. Anyone? Has Ben got his hand up? Ben, are you, or is that our, no, that's on our end. Sorry, Ben. Alrighty, department head round table. Looks like we're gonna start with you, Eric. Uh, not much, just doing maintenance, uh, getting some things caught up or get the bit system off, welding that up, uh, the excavator, the blade, cover blade is cut off. We're getting a new piece made for that, put on, and the seat is gone down to, or up, down, down to, up to Richmond to get reupholstered. Um... That's about it. Winter maintenance going good. Other than working all the time, yeah, yeah, we're going just fine. Perfect. Already. Yeah, no major breakdown so far. Good Knock on wood. Knock on wood. <laughs> Any <laughs> questions for Eric? Already, Bruce, you're up. I don't have much new, but just want to remind everybody with the impending cold weather to uh, if you're going to be going outside, dress warm. Bring in your pets and uh, check on your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions for Bruce? Already. Uh, no Brett yet. No Meredith. No Brett. Brett and Meredith will not be joining us tonight, but uh, Sharon <laughs> perhaps has some updates. Aha. Where's Sharon? Right there. there she is. Go ahead, Sharon. You're muted. I'm trying to hide. Um, <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's election stuff going on. Uh, appropriations and anything going on the warning will be due this Thursday. Any candidates who are running, I need to have your petitions and your signatures by the 24th so they can go on the ballot. Um, Hopefully the governor signed the emergency legislation today for the election. So if he did, then we'll have to make a decision if we're going to do like we did last year or have a in-person meeting and Australian ballot. Uh, so that's the big stuff that's up there right now. Um, there's a lot of moving parts for the election so and they're doing some more legislation so there could be more stuff coming down the pike so basically where we're at right now is the possibility of doing the same thing we did last year have an informational meeting instead of a instead of a town meeting where we vote and then vote right. the following and everything day will be, everything will be on the ballot just like last year just like last year yes. if that's the route we go right and then we're gonna have to decide that next week Valerie or 
Yeah, I recommend that we have the full discussion about that at the next meeting on the 17th. By then, we'll, we should have more solid information, and that'll give us enough time uh, before the end of the month to get a lot to get all of that logistical information together. Perfect. Any questions for Sharon? Boy, we're full of it tonight here. Already. Onward. Regular business. Interviews for potential appointment to, of candidates to the newly formed Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee may include deliberation in executive session. So if I could jump in quickly, uh, we received uh, seven responses uh, before tonight's meeting, and today we received an additional one uh, from Tanya Bash Bash Basha or Basha, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, so whether uh, the select board wants to go you know, one by one or how you want to do it, I don't know. You got all and the, the names of the candidates are listed in the town admin report. And that's Dustin Corrigan, Christian De, De, DeBica, Kevin Mass or Massey. Boy, I'm just going to butcher these names. Herb <laughs> Schult, uh, Jerry Slager, Mark Warner Gavron, Marianne Eaton, and Tanya Bashaw. Well, I'm going to go with just first names if we do them individually. And I'm going <laughs> to go with just first names if we do them all together. So <laughs> perfect. Uh, what's the board's pleasure? Maybe we ask a question and just go through everybody in the order that they're on the. Or maybe just let them have each person give a little. All right. I would say let's have each person say something why they want to be on it, why they think they're qualified, and rather than have us okay. ask questions. Did everybody hear that? Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. And I think if people are hopefully the candidates are familiar with the, the previous sort of ad hoc committee that was formed and how this this committee ask came about. But yeah, I think that's a good idea, Michelle. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna suggest. So let's Perfect. go. Already, well, looks like you draw the short straw, Dustin, because your name's at the top of the list. So <laughs> <laughs> you can set the bar high for everybody else. Okay, yeah, I guess that's a disadvantage of being at the top of the alphabet. Um, so, um, so I guess, so I, I you know, submitted my letter of interest just because I'm, uh, you know, in my role as a, as a physical education teacher at Mount Abraham, I'm very interested in having safe walking routes and biking routes to schools for our kids um, and seeing more kids, you know, walk or pedal their way to school for the physical activity benefits. Also knowing that, you know, in Bristol Village for our elementary school kids, they're, they're not bused to school. They, they have to walk to school. And there's some areas in our village where I, I think improvements could and should be made to make the route safer uh, for those kids that need to walk to school. Um, uh, I, I live in the village of Bristol. Um, I'm right um, on Lawson Lane. It's a private drive uh, right across from the town garage actually beyond the corner of Liberty and Pine, um, neither of which have, have sidewalks on them. And that's a little bit of a problematic spot. So I, they, there's some spots um, that I, you know, I, I know of just because I'm very familiar with the, the streets in town. I'm a very avid runner and biker myself. Um, I, I run about 60 miles a week, a lot of that in the village. So I, I know where uh, where the roads are good, what the shoulders are like, what the sidewalks are like. And so I have that sort of uh, knowledge of, of, of the area as well. And I really just want to make the roads as uh, safe as possible for, you know, our bikers and walkers and vehicles to share and have Bristol be a, a, a place that, uh, you, you know, is, is safe and uh, supportive of you know those who want to bike and walk and uh, have that be part of their healthy lifestyle and their mode of transportation that's that's it really thank you it's just uh, Kristen. christian christian sorry I, I, you can, call I can me even mess up the first name 
<laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry. You did. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll spare you. Valerie actually nailed my last name, which is unbel- which is extremely rare. So don't don't worry about my first name. Um, first of all, th- thanks thanks for having me. Um, when the call went out for this, not unlike Dustin, I'm a I'm an avid cyclist and a runner and walker. And on top of that, um, our family lives on West Pleasant Street, which is an extremely high bike and walking traffic, uh, kind of the main thoroughfare for that in the town. Our son is in third grade at BES. So as long as it's warm enough out, we typically walk to and from school um, on any given school day. Um, We moved here from West Addison, which is a very different scene as far as walking and biking is concerned, not just to the village, but also to this location in the village, because there's a sidewalk right across the street from from our house and that novelty has just has never worn off in the seven and a half years that we've been here um i've worked heavily in the cycling industry uh for a variety of cycle uh, bicycling brands as well as for component brands uh we've also done work um my my business partner and i for world bicycle relief which is uh which is a bicycle charity um on top of some other initiative bicycle centric initiatives when i was living and working in burlington um, not unlike, again, not unlike Dustin, I'm acutely aware, thanks to all the miles I log on a weekly basis of what areas in town are great, what areas have certainly improved since we've moved to the village, and which ones still feel like there's there's some areas for improvement. Um, that said, I'm also, and we've been hearing these discussions since we moved into town, I'm also wide open to any any suggestions and ideas that aren't currently even, you know, ha- haven't even been talked about at least officially, like everything from one way streets, bigger and more formal bike lanes and things of that nature. Uh, especially because I feel like this conversation about biking and walking dovetails very, very much with the, with the, um, with the school issue, with the school conversations that are going on about the district and things of that nature and anything that can bolster the safety and well-being of kids walking to school has the downstream kind of effects of bolstering the school itself. So that's why I'm, I'm hoping to get involved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kevin. Good evening, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Um, start with that I'm um, a long time member of our community. Uh, I was just thinking about it while others were talking. Uh, you know, I just turned 52 and I've spent well over 40 years of my life here. Uh, first grade at Bristol Elementary School, middle school at the old middle school, which is now Be Fit. And uh, back in the day, we used to walk up to Mountain Street every day for lunch and walk back to the middle school for lunch. Um, and we did that without adult supervision. We did that with just students being responsible and um, making good choices, sometimes good choices. Um, so with that, uh, Mount Naves, my alma mater, similar to Dustin. And um, yes, I, I love this community, to be blunt and frank about it. Um, I've been a teacher at Mount Abe for 24 years and uh, 23 of those years, I've been the driver's ed teacher. So I am on the roads every day in town, um, seeing it professionally. And I have great connections uh, professionally and and educationally with different networks in the community and in the state and then nationally. Um, I've helped uh, guide the state of Vermont in developing the learning targets and proficiencies for driver education. And with that, there's definitely a component to uh, sharing the road and having uh, things be safe for for bicyclists and pedestrians. Um, On a personal note, uh, I'm not running like I used to, but I I enjoyed quite a few of the 4th of July 5K and the cystic fibrosis 5K. And and we'll see, Uh, I might get back to it. But uh, this past year, I rekindled uh, my passion for biking and uh, fixed up an old Cannondale using a local shop, Chris and Luke down at uh, Cool Motion Outdoors. They they helped me get my bike up and running and I spent uh, many, many hours uh, 
biking this year. And I've got a few loops that I like to do personally. Um, for my children, Zeke's seven, Jade is nine, and Zeke loves the pump track. And Jade loves going over to the other track at the, the rec field. So um, my kids like to bike. And during the summer, it became pretty common. We'd, we'd go over to the skate park pump track, and then we'd finish by biking down to get a creamy. And for me, when I was nine years old, I used to bike from my parents' house on Route 17 up Stony Hill and play Sandlot baseball. And to be frank, I don't think I would let Jade, no, I would not let Jade do that right now as a nine-year-old, going to be a 10-year-old in the spring. Um, I remember when I was 12 and biking to Middlebury just for fun. Um, that, that would be very concerning for me. So um, I'm very personally invested with my myself, my family, and the community. Um, and I think it would be great to, to give back. I'm not coaching as much at Mount Abe as I used to. So um, this is something new and I, I think it, it'd be fun. Thank you. Uh, Herb, you need to unmute. <laughs> That's better. Hi, thanks yep. for having me. Um, being a part of the project to help increase the road safety in town has always been something dear to me. Uh, as a, the, the chair of the school board in Orwell, I worked with the select board there to help to get the speed limits reduced uh, out on 22A some years ago. Um, I live on the corner uh, the, of the, the school crossing in the uh, Burke House. And we just get to watch a lot of people come and go. And I think it's a really important part of uh, helping build up our community and keeping our community safe to do these things that uh, and think about more things that Jessica brought last uh, last meeting or the meeting uh, before that in uh, calming traffic and creating spaces uh, that are more dedicated for bikes, uh, putting in some signaling, all these sorts of things that uh, help make it more safe for all of the folks here. And I watch lots of people walk in and out and bikes and uh, it's hard to watch sometimes the near misses that you see. And so I think that uh, being a part of this group would help me feel, uh, you gotta get back into a little public service from years away. I'd been a resident of uh, Bristol for about 12 years, worked in uh, a couple of schools around in the district. Um, walking each day with, uh, our kids and making sure that there's a safe way for everybody to get in and out of town. As uh, we seem to be getting a little more and more traffic. And I think having a, uh, a group like this to work towards these goals, which have been in discussion for quite some time is, is a great step forward. And I would, would love to be a part of it. Thanks. Okay. Jared. Got on mute, Jerry. Anyway, I'm muted again. Hi, everybody. It's a tough there group to follow. Oh, my God. Great group of guys. Well, you've huh? never been on a bike. No, no. Well, I was just thinking, I mean, every, I agree with everything everybody said, I, the town and the kids and making it safe and working. But I'm looking at, I'll, I'll be the guy that brings stuff more as a professional side because there's probably six or seven companies that bring bike groups to Bristol. So we bring literally thousands of people through Bristol. And I, besides making it safe for the kids, which is uh, everybody in town, I'd love to be Bristol be known as a, a safe community, the whole town for a cyclist. Um, it, the word gets out there, people come there. The leaders always talk to the guests on route wraps and saying, you're going to love going to Bristol because it's a bicycle friendly, safe town. Um, and with all that happening, it's going to make it safe for all the community and the kids and walking. Um, my passion, I, I moved here in 79 for bicycling, uh, working for Vermont Bicycle Touring. 
Um, I actually led trips this summer again. They pulled me out of retirement. So I've been doing it for 40, leading bike trips for 40 years of the 42 years I've lived here in Vermont and bicycled all over the world. So I've seen all kinds of conditions, all kinds of road markings and signs and how the communities are and how people feel about cycling. And I know we're working on a, uh, making it safe to go from here to Virgins and New Haven and other communities that will bring a team effort to bring the whole network into making it safe. Because as um, um, Herb said, it's getting busy out there. We used to bike on main roads and now everybody's trying to get with uh, gravel grinders to get stay on dirt roads to be safe. So I, I love this project. I love new committees. Um, I always look forward to something starting up new to start fresh. And um, I can't think of something that's more passion in my heart that uh, for safe bicycling. It's been something I've, I've promoted my whole life. Well, most of my life, a part of my life anyway, um, with leading. I've lived here um, off and on between here and Lincoln. Um, but my home now is in Bristol on Devon Lane with my wife since 07. Um, we moved back down. My wife wanted to go someplace warm like Virginia, and I said, Bristol's nice, and I won. So that was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky on that part. We'll see tomorrow morning what she says. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. She's got to take me into town and tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be hard to get it's her out. It's warm in the <laughs> summer. Yeah, I know. It's, it's great. <laughs> so, I mean, that's it. I, I love this idea. Um, I've, been, I've been walking and biking and, and hiking forever, so to make uh, Bristol a safer place. And I agree with what everybody else said about the hot points and making it definitely safe for our kids to bike. And when I go by the Bristol uh, school and see all the bikes lined up in all kinds of weather, it just brings such a smile that we got future cyclists. And now that we have a bike shop in town and we want to make it safe to get out to Simo's place so people can get their bikes fixed in that. And get this. So that's it, I think, for me. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Mark, you're up. Ah, uh, see, I, I originally responded. I'm a kind of a daily in the warmer weather bicyclist and commuted to Middlebury throughout the year at times. And I, I think where I come from is um, there's a lot of things that create community in in uh, Bristol and living on Pleasant Street. I think a huge thing is the all the pedestrians and bicyclists that go by and. You know, we have our porches and everybody says hello to each other on the porches. And um, so it feels like a, a huge thing that knits the community together, as does everybody volunteers for the select board in this committee. And um, so I was thinking I'd step forward and be part of the, the solution, part of the community in that way. But there's a lot of people who have stepped forward and they all sound great. So I don't feel a need to jump in if there's already enough people maybe you know you can plug me in someplace else where there's not enough people um yeah i think uh i think the only thing i say is that i have written a code of driver etiquette in my head you know probably revised it a thousand times as i'm bicycling up to lincoln from bristol or over to middlebury and just the way people pass bicyclists and the way bicyclists ride also so i've thought a lot uh, about that um yeah so i guess i'll just kind of end it there thanks mark marianne hi everybody this is my first foray into volunteering for the community i have lived in moncton and bristol since the mid 1990s I now live on Moncton Road at a very dangerous blind corner. And I am an avid cyclist and have been for 35 years. And I have joined Jerry on some of VBT's cycling around the globe. And so I, I do really appreciate safe roads. I do not have any children, so I'm unfamiliar with the needs of what the school and the community is going through. But I do bicycle through the village on my way to longer bike rides around the area. I am never comfortable riding through Main Street. I am never comfortable riding on Moncton Road. There is a corner on Moncton Road and Burpee 
that is extremely dangerous and I've been hit, almost hit at least three times just trying to get home. So this is a very passionate subject for me. Um, I currently rent this home that I'm in, but I would love the opportunity to live in downtown Bristol because I value the sense of community and the walkability of this beautiful town that we live in. And so I am looking for my future home to be in the village so that I can connect more with my community and feel comfortable walking around town and supporting my local shops and therefore supporting my town. So I come from a marketing background. I'm a, a video producer, director and editor, and I have been my entire career. So a lot of my job relates to marketing aspects and, and in order to promote Bristol uh, to be a great place to visit, walking and cycling plays a big role in that. And I would love the opportunity to support the marketing efforts of Bristol to attract more people from the outside to come here. And so I, I value everything that Bristol has, but I would love to, to be a part of making it better. Thank you. And Tanya. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Um, I moved to Bristol a couple of years ago uh, from Burlington, and I definitely cycle a lot. Um, There's a wonderful, huge change from Burlington to here in terms of cycling comfort and um, uh, walkability as well. I walk the towns at night a lot. I live on Mountain Street, so it's just the perfect place in my book for that. Um, I also work part-time at Little City Cycles in Virgins, and I have a nonprofit with Tim Mathewson who owns that shop um, called Green Mountain Foster Bikes, and we give donated bikes to foster kids in Vermont. So I'm definitely in the community in that way, um, but I love Bristol and I want to help support um, making Bristol also a cycling hub. Um, just like Virgins is becoming as well. I noticed that in the last two years, the amount of bike tours shot up so drastically. And so, yeah, I want to be a part of making the roads a lot safer. I definitely have had some challenging moments uh, commuting from here to Virgins on a bicycle. Um, so I'm interested in fixing those issues as well. But also, of course, in town is the most important and for the kids, for sure. Um, yeah, I haven't, uh, gotten involved previously with anything in Bristol. This is sort of my first attempt to jump in and get more involved in the community. Uh, I really love it here. So I want to make this my forever home and yeah, be more active. And that's all I got. All right. Anybody got any questions for anybody we've heard from? We're looking for seven members for this, mm -hmm. and we currently have eight applicants. Um, I don't. I don't necessarily think we need to, to make this decision in executive session. If Mark is um, of the attitude to stand down and let the other seven go, uh, that's my opinion. And we got the thumbs up from Mark. Uh, what it in what you yeah yeah i'm fine with that i think that's that's if mark's willing to do that i think that would be excellent and then we'd have our seven and we could start that committee and mark if you're interested we have room on the arpa funding committee <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i didn't hear which committee that was the american rescue plan funds we have a committee going to, to evaluate and decide on where to use those funds or present to the select board options of where to put that money. I can't see who's talking. Who should I call about that? I didn't quite get all that, but I can oh, call. Yeah, yeah can talk call to Valerie. Val about that. Okay. All yeah, right. essentially, I mean, the basic is the ARPA funding from at the federal level comes to Bristol. Mm -hmm. We have 1.2 uh, million that we need to, we're looking to look for projects. And so we're starting a committee to sort of help us figure out what we could spend that money on. 
it's obviously a, a very different committee than the bicycle committee and pedestrian committee, yeah. but uh, <laughs> it's, it, I think it would be, it would be a very worthwhile committee to be a part of if you're interested, Mark. Well, I, I'd like to kind of plug into the community in some way. So yeah, let me uh, maybe talk and think more about it. And okay, fantastic, it's thank a, you. It's a committee that we actually have money to spend with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And it'll That's be right. a short term, short term. Yeah. Yes. Ah, short term, spending money quickly. <laughs> no, okay. All right, I'll, I'll give you a call. There's also a vacancy on the Conservation Commission. Oh. Sarah, what are your thoughts? I think it's great. I think it's, uh, thanks, Mark, for, for making that offer. It makes it a little easier on us. We don't have to. We don't have to kick somebody off, so that's great. <laughs> I appreciate you being willing to do that. Um, no, I think uh, everyone's given great, you know, reasons for wanting to be on this um, on this board, and for um, you know, they've all stated great, uh, you know, ideas so far. I'm I'm excited about this group. All right. So I would entertain a motion. Uh, I'll make I, a motion. I was going to say, do we want to list each one of them out, or just? Yeah, yeah I, well, I could just, I would make a motion to appoint Dustin, uh, Christian, Kevin, Herb, Jerry, Marianne, and Tanya to the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. I will second I'll that. Second. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> there, there, she's right on it today. Yeah, she's, she not, she's not uh, waiting. No. That's right. For the discussion. Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Raise aye. your hand, aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Congratulations. Thanks, um, question on logistics. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we, we've talked about the, the size of the group, but does the select board want to establish something like terms, like two year terms or staggered terms or something like that at this point? Yeah, it might be good good to do that, right? I mean, we could do we could do similar. I mean, other committees usually have a two year and a three year term, um, so so it's a little bit easier to to uh, get new members when when terms are up um, and also also overlap. Um, so we could we could do the same along with that. Just so it's I see it as an ongoing thing. I mean, it's obviously there's. <laughs> A lot, a lot to do in town, I think, in terms of any any number of these issues in terms of pedestrian and safety and bicycle safety. Um, so I see, I'd like to see this committee, you know, continue for a, a good number of years. Mm -hmm. And there may be moments in time where they there's a lull and they don't need to meet on a regular basis. That's right. Yeah, so I, think, I think this- you see this as ongoing, Ian and Val. Yeah. This is, it's not a short, it's not like a two year committee once, once they come up with ideas, it's gonna be ongoing, okay. Yeah. That, that's how I envision, and I don't know if other people have, have other thoughts about that. So why don't we let them meet, and we'll give them the choice of, uh, what do you want to do, three of them three-year terms and two of them, uh, four of them two-year terms? Yeah. And let them decide who wants what term. They can pick their chair, their vice chair, and yeah. give us the, the terms that they're interested in. And... Then we'll we'll add them to the list. We'll add them to the list, and and you'll be reappointed, or well, obviously you have the opportunity to step, step down at any time, but you'll be reappointed in March every year. Um, after your expiration. After your yeah, when your term expires. So that's the way it currently works, and the other committees work, and I don't see this one being any different. Okay, I'm happy to put my name down as a select board liaison for that committee as well. Thank you, Ian. Perfect. You have way too much time, Ian. <laughs> I know. I don't know where I get it from. <laughs> <laughs> you got off Bristol Core. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Alrighty, okay. we're gonna move on. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, thank you everyone, everyone for volunteering. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Bye. Good night, Chris. Wait to next door. <laughs> Ian. Yep. Ian, so you, you're gonna like send us all an email. We'll just get a date or something going then. Yeah, I think I'll work with Val and I can sort of talk about that and figure it out. And it's usually just probably a single meeting a month. Um, usually it's in the evenings. We can set it up for the town account so we can record it because it's a public meeting. Um, but let me, I can talk to Val offline about that. And we can figure out and I can, I'm happy to talk with the group. And after, awesome. after the first meeting, the first meeting, you guys can set your schedule when, you know, the time you want right. to meet and, and 
decide on a day of the week that works the best for you. We're not going to dictate that. It just, we'll let Ian set the first one up and get you rolling. And from there, it'll be your game. Right. Everybody happy with that? Yes. Right. Thank you, everyone. I, I also just wanted to add that uh, although we have uh, appointed members, uh, members of the public are also welcome to attend all of these meetings, even if they're not appointed. Yep. So, yep. so citizens, if you're interested, can also attend and contribute to the meetings. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. They're all okay. open. They're all open meetings. I definitely plan to come to some. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Sally. Great. All right. All right. We're going to move on. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yes, thank you. John Graham Housing and Services, Addison County Community Trust. Uh, presentation regarding their VHCB and ARPA funding request. I don't have any names. I don't have any names here, so I don't know who. Okay, I'll I'll just jump right in then. Um, okay. Hi, everybody. I am uh, Susan Whitmore. I am the new executive director of John Graham Housing and Services. Um, we're headquartered in Virgins, but we have properties in Bristol, Middlebury, and Virgins. And um, we just uh, we're partnering with Addison County Community Trust um, on a project to rehabilitate and ensure the preservation of our affordable housing properties in Addison County. As you all know, um, the housing situation in the state is um, critical and especially critical for, for people um, who are moving through emergency shelter into transitional housing and hopefully permanent housing as well. We have a property in um, Bristol, 24 Mountain Street, and that is one of the, pro the properties included in the project. The four rental properties uh, included in the first part of our application um, are, we have uh, two in, um, two in Virgins, one in Middlebury and one in Bristol. The VHCB ARPA application is um, something that ha has cut, the, the money came into, it's federal money that came into the states that includes um, a significant amount of money for housing in Vermont as well. And so VHCB, which is the Vermont Housing Conservation Board, is dispersing those dollars. Our funding request will either be paid by ARPA dollars or by other VHCB funds. We're not sure exactly which. And Elise, feel free to jump in if you need to correct me on any of those parts. Um, but um, I just wanted to let, we just wanted to inform everyone about the project. We're not making a request today. Um, we just wanted you to know that it's going on. We, we are well into completing the feasibility stage of um, uh, the, all the preparation for being able to make our application to VHCB in February. And um, so we've completed the capital needs assessments and the appraisals. Um, we're working on a market study. We're also looking to um, hopefully expand affordable housing in the county so that we can increase our reach um, and help more people and more individuals and families. Um, so that is basically it in a nutshell. This is my first select board meeting in Vermont. So I'm just delighted to be here and meet you all and um, really happy that um, Addison County Community Trust is partnering with John Graham on us, with, with us on this because uh, as you know, they have, you're well acquainted with their projects obviously. And um, they have the model of what, um, nice affordable housing really looks like in Addison County, in my view. And it's, it's one of the reasons that I've been really grateful for Elisa's help and, and ACCT's help in um, addressing some of the deferred maintenance issues that exist in John Graham's properties. So that's kind of where we're at with things. Um, Elise, uh, 
do you want to, uh, we, we also just completed a, a tax credit application for 4% low income housing tax um, credits uh, that would be part of the financing for the project. And um, Elise is a bit more of an expert on that. So I'll let her tell you a little bit about that. Thanks, Susan. Um, I actually really don't have very much to add. Uh, we're just excited to be working on the project, um, in particular, uh, wanting to take advantage of this influx of federal money, the low income housing tax credit um, program. Those are funds that we can leverage uh, with this influx of federal funds um, and uh, bring those dollars to Addison County to upgrade our housing stock is really the bottom line. Um, and we work closely with John Graham, supporting a lot of our residents in our permanent apartment, uh, permanently affordable apartments, uh, including at um, our house apartments uh, when those come online, hopefully in 2023. Um, so I think it's a great partnership and a great project. So I have a quick question. I mean, I, and maybe I misunderstood. So your funding is coming from ARPA funds that are federal funds that are not part of the funds that are coming to the town or you're going yeah. to be making the rest of the town. Right. I wanted to make that distinction when I heard that about that committee that you were just discussing. Um, those are completely separate dollars. There's a portion of the American uh, relief pol uh American That's Relief Plan Act <laughs> that are specifically just given to towns to make decisions about how they want to use those dollars themselves. And they're um, based on the population for each town. So the state got a certain amount of money and, and all of the towns and cities in Vermont are getting portions of that. But that is a, a separate um, request um, or a separate pot of money. Um, uh, John Graham does have, we did write a letter of request asking for a portion of those funds for essential workers. Um, so that may be a little confusing just having us on the agenda tonight because that's a separate, um, a totally separate thing. Okay. And at this time, I'll just add, we don't anticipate using community development block grant funds that would come through Bristol on this project. We won't, we don't have all of our funding together, but it's not anticipated to be part of this package. Other questions for them? Ian? Oh, I'm good, thanks. Carla? You're good. Joel? Sure. Yes. Are, are these yes. The, uh, I know the John Graham shelter. I know you've been more involved than just the one in the gents. What are the buildings that you plan to renovate here in Bristol? 24 Mountain Street. Okay, 24 Mountain. Okay. Yeah, 24 Mountain. You um, do own one that you just finished doing a beautiful job down on Hunt Farm Road. Bristol Family Housing. Correct. No, this is that's Addison County Community Project. Yeah. This yeah, that's not, yeah, ACCT. That was, yes, that was actually an Ever North project, but um, very similar to what we hope to be able to do on Mountain Street. Okay, thank you. Sally. Um, I'm not really sure if this has to do with what you're just speaking about, but there is a um, project that Bristol and um, the, all of Addison County is going to do regarding looking at how to rehab a building, various buildings in Bristol. We're mainly gonna focus on municipal buildings throughout Addison County. But I think in Middlebury, they're even looking at some houses. And I'm wondering if looking at say that 24 Mountain Street building could be looked at through this lens that MIT and Middlebury College interns mm -hmm. are doing together would give great information on um, what it would cost to, you know, to redo or something. I don't even, I don't know. Yeah, if it's we, it's interesting because a big part of the, the funding is, is geared. They really are looking for um, agencies to also expand capacity to build more housing or create more units. And we actually did look at that for, for the mountain street um, property to see if we could, um, uh, get more people in there, make more units, and and it doesn't work with the zoning. Okay. So, but um, that, but Elise and I are definitely on the lookout for other properties um, where we might be able to do that sort of conversion um, to ensure that that the housing remains affordable. 
Yep. Okay. Hunt Farm was really unique, but Firehouse Apartments is a more typical project for our funding sources to have enough scale to put together a project. We typically need about 20 units and it's very hard to come by sites that can accommodate 20 units. So that's one of the um, things that, uh, you know, is hopefully something that this project can help with is one of those smaller opportunities like a fourplex that ACCT wouldn't normally be able to acquire and rehab. If we bundle it with part of this project, all of a sudden we have a vehicle to do some smaller infill projects. So that's what we're on the lookout for, but we haven't found uh, an acquisition opportunity yet that, that is quite the right one. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Well, thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? No, just thank you for your service and uh, thank you for having us tonight. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good evening. Thanks. Oh, acknowledgement of response to Louis Teets. Complaint on recent Drake Smith Road maintenance. So I'll just jump in quickly that uh, online is the, the letter that the select board received from Orion Lewis and Jessica Teets sent, expressing their complaints and concerns. And uh, this, so even though that letter was received in November, um, we anticipated that it would be on tonight's agenda to acknowledge it and also to uh, just uh, share information about follow-up that has occurred since then and any other steps that need to be considered. Yeah, I think we should make it really clear that this hasn't been lingering. It was dealt with, it was dealt with in a very timely manner and we just haven't documented it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, Peeker and, uh, and Ian uh, visited with the property owners and had a conversation. And so perhaps you can give us an update on, on how that went. Uh, sure. It went Go ahead, Ian. I was going to, I'll just, I can, I can read what I sort of wrote in the email just as a follow up. Um, yeah. So Peeker and I met, chatted with uh, Orion for a good probably four to five minutes, just discussed his concerns about the work that was done on that road. Um, and the sort of the lack of involvement he had, he felt he had as a landowner. Um, he felt that there should have been much more communication from the town uh, prior to the work being done. Um, and Peter and I spoke to him about that. Um, and that obviously would have allowed sort of more discussion about the project. Uh, we did agree to sort of bring in new topsoil and dirt next spring to replace what was removed, which was one of the requests that he had, uh, and also compensate the, him for the removed plantings. Um, and there was also an additional suggestion that Peeker had sort of when we had the talk there, which was to line that lower ditch on the road uh, with stone for better drainage. Um, so we just wanted to uh, sort of officially put that on just so uh, the property owners were aware of this. Um, I know that Orion's on tonight um, and just so it sort of made it official as opposed to just having having the two members of the select board meeting, but just letting everyone know about it and having it in the public meeting. Um, so I'll just chime in here and confirm everything that was just communicated there. Um, I appreciate you coming out and uh, discussing it with me directly. Um, and I think that um, the solution that we arrived at is uh, amenable to us uh, as landowners. Um, and I, the only thing I would just add to this is that... Um, moving forward that we would hope that there would be some discussion process when it comes to um, these sorts of uh, public works projects that encroach on private property. Uh, and so in terms of the Vermont law and the select board rights, uh, you definitely have the rights uh, for public right of way, but there's also the process to follow in terms of notification um, and engagement with the landowners. And so, um, I would hope that um, we, as a, we as a town can be a little more systematic about that uh, as our, you know, hum, humble requests. I know, it's, and I know it's a difficult process, but, um, you know, to the extent that we can try and achieve that, I think it would 
make for amicable relations uh, amongst the community. And I, I think especially in your case, it was a tight area. You know, there's not a lot of not a lot of property property there to deal with. It's not like you're out on a road where you're only on one side. You've got roads on both sides of your property. So if if the right of way is dug up on both sides, it really encroaches on your on your property. So I, I totally get it. Sure, sure. Um, and and I would just say I appreciate the select board's um, responsiveness uh, to this matter. Thank you. If I could add, and, and Eric might want to add some things too, but uh, Drake Smith Road is unique, well, it's, it's somewhat unique in that it's it's a private road. And so there really is not a right of way for to guide the, the Public Works Department on where the limits are. And uh, chances are, if we were to lay out a three rod right of way down Drake Smith Road, uh, the the um, the 25 feet from the center line would quite likely go through many buildings and in, well into the private property areas. Um, so it's an awkward arrangement for the town and um, because it is narrow and um, it, the, the road does require maintenance from time to time. And when it gets deferred, certain things have to be caught up on. And I think that contributed to the, the scope of the drainage work that, that was accomplished there. And in, in, in just in general, uh, where there are town highway right of ways, uh, in the um, in the, the pamphlet that I posted a link to on the on the in my TA report, it explains that uh, within that highway right of way, uh, the municipality has actually a responsibility to to maintain the roadways within that right of way, and can do just about anything they need to do. Uh, to do to do that, uh, ditching, removing trees, uh, prohibiting certain objects within the right of way, or property owners need to request permission and approval to uh, uh, install certain things in the right of way. Uh, and if those things get damaged because they're in the right of way, it's not the town's problem. So there, there, there are benefits to having a, a defined right of way and, and responsibilities. And uh, so going forward with Drake Smith road um and, and also i wanted to add that in the course of the daily operations of road maintenance that it's not a practical approach to have to notify everybody when there's when routine or what's considered what might be thought of as routine maintenance is is being planned so that's this i just wanted to put that on the table so that uh and maybe eric can speak to this in terms of historical practices or or other thoughts about um, how, how how they manage their maintenance systems. I, I think our, our conversation revolved around the fact that, you know, when we're going to do something that where we haven't, where it's not typical of maintenance that we really ought to involve the the property owners, if we're going to do something other than other than what we normally do, I think that's where we ended up, and I think we need to be a little bit better about that. Um, it, it just it it bodes to everything that interview everybody that interviewed for the for the previous committee. You know, uh, Bristol's a nice place to be, and if we want to keep it that way, we need to be open and honest with our people. So, I don't think it can hurt to reach out when we know we're going to be doing something drastic, which um in their opinion it was drastic because they don't have a lot of property to begin with and uh everything you take away is a big impact on them so it yeah. totally i just think we need to move forward with what we talked about on those four or five roads yeah. anyway i think we just need to get that process going i didn't hear what you said michelle we need to move forward on those four or five roads we've been talking about you know, with regard to maintenance and that, that are not technically town roads. Right. Well, one option is to uh, reclassify or classify Drake Smith Road as a municipal road. And to do that, would the minimum road width would be a three rod right of way. And that way it becomes an official road that's uh, on the town, on the official town highway map, the town would get this, a small increase in compensation from, from VTrans with that additional mileage because uh, VTrans compensates 
municipalities based upon the length of roads and the, the class of roads that they maintain. So well, right now, it. right now, the, the maintenance of uh, Drake Smith Road and the other private roads is entirely on the town and is not reimbursed at all by VTrans. Well, our other option is either we give the road up or it's a class four road. It's a class four road, then we determine what, what the maintenance requirements are. And I don't know that we have that with three rod right away for a class four. Right. Class, class four road, all you're, all you're liable to maintain is bridges and culverts right. on a class four road. All right. You got on mute there. You got on mute. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, so just to respond to a, a couple of things here. Um, one, I think with respect to the Drake Smith project in particular, um, it, it was a situation where in our view, it was not a uh, standard maintenance. So we uh, owned this property about 10 years ago when it was last ditched. Um, and so I knew the size of the ditching um, of Drake Smith Road at that time uh, that we owned it. And so in our view, um, this was a substantial increase in the size of the ditching that was done on the road. So I think that's the key point for us is um, I think we would have been totally comfortable with what had been there before. It was that this was a dramatic change from what had been there before that um, should have in our view, required uh, this quasi-judicial uh, process. Um, <clears throat> I think, in terms of the right of the broader right of way, you know, um, you know, classifying the road, uh, you know, that's obviously your decision. But you know, from my vantage point as a property owner here on Drake Smith Road, um, I don't have any problem with the reclassification or the town having a right of way. I think what's important, and that's one of the points that we were trying to make in our letter, is that. Um, you're right that a right, a right of way gives you rights and responsibilities. So rights to use it for public purposes, responsibilities to maintain the, the thoroughfare uh, and, and, and uh, public use. But it is not a right of way is not an unlimited right to use private property as the town sees fit within that distance. Um, and so I think that's the important thing that's that we need to make sure we establish legally is that you have the right of way to you have the right to use that property if you go through the process that is articulated under section 19 of the Vermont uh, State Assembly uh, law and that's the notification process engagement with the property owner so you have a right of way to use their property if you go through a process in which you are engaging them where there is a an understanding of what that what that public use is and what the rationale behind it is. Um, and so I would have no problem of you having a right of way here on this road, as long as we understood what the process for, for using that right of way is. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> uh, I, but I, 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 pre I appreciate your time and, and, and response, response of this, uh, responsiveness to this. I know I would be uh, just to the extent that it matters as a, as a property owner here, I would be fine with the town reclassifying this road. I think you're already doing the work, it seems to me, uh, in terms of managing the road already. Ready. Thank you. Right. Thank anything, you. Anything further? Oh, we didn't address the hostels. We addressed them in your email, but we didn't address them here tonight, right? Right, it was just the compensation for them, and that I think we can figure that out off, offline. Correct. Well, there should be if we're going to if the select board is going to agree to compensate, uh, either accept the value that's been presented or uh, recommend an alternative. How many hostages are we talking? You don't know. I, I, I mean, estimate like ten to fifteen. Because I got, uh, my wife's got a bunch that she would part with if that would work for you. I mean, a bunch of ours need to be thinned out. So I don't know. I mean, more than willing to, to give those to you if that works for you. Or we <laughs> you can might drop them off at our place. <laughs> yeah, we can handle that. Or, <laughs> or if, if you'd rather have something. In um, a pot. <laughs> yeah, in a pot. I mean. 
<laughs> no, it doesn't need to be potted. We just need 10 to 15 for erosion control on that hillside. Yeah. I think you can probably come up with those with some thinning that needs to be done. Um, if that works for you. And if not, then we'll have to, we'll have to come up with a, another plan. I'd, I'd be okay with that. But if everybody's uh, agreeable to that, we can start with that. Yeah, that's fine. And uh, just to be clear, we also agreed to uh, five yards of topsoil. Uh, in the, the when you're, when you're ready and have a place for it, Eric, we'll bring it to you. Yes. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Are we all set on this? We will move forward. Uh, I, I think the letter's already been sent, so it's not. It's just we're just making sure that the public is aware of what we've done is all. That there's written. Yeah. All righty. Reconsideration of indoor mass mandate. So online and referenced in my report, our, our um, information, it, it's information provided from Linda Andrews uh, yeah. at different moments. Uh, I did not have time to, to whip up a, um, a, a proposal for the select board to act on tonight, but uh, so maybe tonight is, starts the conversation and maybe ends with a proposal of some sort. What was the, what did you end up finding about the difference between the rule and the, and the mandate, Linda? Did you research that a little further? I didn't get a chance to read up on it either. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, well, uh, between a rule and an ordinance, uh, ordinances can be, um, you know, can be enforced and it's voted on by the public. And I guess it's a very, you know, it is more formal. Um, every, I, I found out there's about 20 towns that have a mandate and I looked at the different mandates of the different towns and they're all very different. Um, and, uh, you know, I, basically you can decide what you want to say in, in your mandate. Uh, one does have a penalty. One says no penalty. Um, so it's a big variety pack. I know that the state, I know Mari Cordes is, is introducing a bill this session on a mass mandate, but you know, that's going to take a while, but I got a copy of that and I sent it to Valerie that we could look at. Um, but I think um, uh, it, we, it can't wait too long because this surge is now. <laughs> right. So this isn't something we can... <laughs> Um, and I, I, I really recommend that we, we um, look at the, you can just take the state one and then cut and paste. Um, we can make it much simpler. They go into defining everything in theory, but. Um, I what? actually think um, Middlebury's, uh, the one that they, the resolution that they adopted, which is a should and not a shall. Uh, but, and theirs goes into not only uh, town properties, but all public indoor facilities. So I think that's a question uh, that is on the table. If the select board wants to continue this, I, when, when Ian first brought it up, uh, I, I think I understood that his focus was municipal facilities and didn't go beyond that into private property. Uh, but I think what Linda is looking for is a broader approach townwide, uh, including private property, which Middlebury's does. Yeah, and I, I've, my, Ian, you weren't there when I presented, but um, really our, uh, we're having a disastrous effect on our healthcare system when we've just got to protect um, our healthcare workers from having this huge surge in the hospitals. It's just breaking us and not, uh, nurses are exhausted. Um, we can't, they're having staff shortages. Um, patients who really need elective surgery can't get it. And, um, these traveling nurses get paid two or three times more than the core nurses. So there's demoralization. So we really have to prevent these COVID cases going to the hospital. We have to do everything we can. We need to just be, have a broad mandate. Now, 
um, and it, and doing this, we actually many of our stores are great. They have required mass mandates, but this supports them. They can say this is a town mandate, so it supports the businesses that have this. Um, and uh, so I I really urge that. I I think we do have to protect our our restaurants. I mean, many of the ma the mandates say that. You know, the mask can be off while you're eating <laughs> and drinking. So, um, and many of them have that in there, but I think we should have it for all. Uh, and public transport buses, um, that we should be inclusive of that. I just emailed to folks the Middlebury resolution. I can also post it. I can share my screen if, if that's if folks would like. Yeah, sh share your screen, Val, if you can. Let's take a look. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have a hard copy of it that I was going to talk about, but if you if you have it, Val, and can share it, that'd be great. Sally, to answer your question, I'm not sure that giving doing a mask mandate would allow us to have a in person town meeting anyway. If the states, if right. the states are going that route, the route they're going, then my guess is it won't matter. Hmm. I'm trying to uh, make sure I get the right window when I share the screen. Um, let me. Do we have a suggestion from our health officer in one direction or another in regard to masks? Not that I've received. Okay. I've kept oh, Diane. In the is she on? Diane was going to come on in this. Tonight, I don't know where she is. Yeah, I haven't seen her on. I mean, there's just so much confusion going on about masks and whether they're Even helpful, whether they're not helpful. Good, yeah. I mean, we got our state legislature saying the masks aren't doing any good. It's like, well, then why are we we've, we've been wearing masks for the past two years? So, I mean, I think this is just also confusing for everybody. No, the masks are very, very effective. Listen, I'm a nurse. I've worn masks in hospitals. I mean, I rely on masks. Masks are very effective. I, 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 that isn't even a question. I, 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 they are effective. And yeah, I, there's, there's, there's plenty of, plenty of evidence that show that masks are effective. It's, you know, the trouble is you have a, it's the combination of, of masking being taken away and uh, very, uh, uh, infectious uh, variants of of the COVID coming in, and so it's a combination of that, that that's led to these the large scale uh, infections. Unfortunately, um, you know we demonstrated last year with with the mask mandate that was finally put in place that masks were successful when we didn't have vaccines and we still had high rates of infection. Those went down greatly, um, and I do think you know given as Linda described, given what's happening in our hospitals and high numbers, you know, the number was very low today, but that's because it's, they're still waiting. Everyone's sort of overwhelmed in, in so many different areas. Um, I think it's sort of, it's, it's probably time to look at this in a, in a broader sense. And I, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to do because I know that it's, it's, the town will receive more, could potentially receive more, more uh, complaints from residents about this and people coming into town, but it's still, you know, I think it shows it does set, you know, have a statement and show support with our with our businesses here. A lot of which, as Linda said, are are, you know, requiring coverings uh, in their businesses. But I think it, it adds that extra layer to be able to have it come from the town. Mm -hmm. Can folks see this, this uh, shared screen? Yeah. Yes. OK. So this was one that uh, Middlebury adopted earlier on last year, or in 2020. So this this does not reflect the more current uh, the current uh, authorization so, or updated language to reference it. Val, is this still in effect? Because I thought they were only no. This 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 ended with the ending of the uh, um, uh, okay. declaration of emergency. Yeah, well, they, they do have, have an, they do have another one currently for. Yeah municipal buildings. I don't think right. they've gone outside of that currently. Okay. I, I have a hard copy of the of the one that was adopted on December 21st or December, okay. I'm sorry, adopted 14th day of December. And the way that that one reads is 
um, all persons in the town of Middlebury should wear face coverings to cover their nose and mouth whenever inside a public media, a public setting. Public settings will include, but not limited to, retail establishments, food and beverage serving establishments, lodging facilities, service facilities, municipal owned buildings, and places of business. The resolution does not. The resolution does not apply to state and federal owned properties um, that the town lacks jurisdiction in. Mm -hmm. So it, does, it basically says the same thing that the previous one did. Yeah. Yeah, this talks about it's not applicable to children, to and under. Um, mask and face shields should comply with the current um, uh, United States Center for Disease Control criteria. Establishments where the resolution applies should conspicuously post this near their public entrance. Um, it's very short. It's very concise. It doesn't talk about penalty or anything like that, but it does show support and and concern for public health. And I think our, in my opinion, our, our Department of Health has been really clear about the need for this. And I, I for one, would fully support it at this point. That just so, so you know, that resolution is not enforceable in that you can't find, because it doesn't say, sh it doesn't say shall, it says should. It says should, it's just correct. A, it's just a recommendation. It's not really... It's not a mandate, so to speak. Correct. Bruce. Mm. Hang on, yes, Bruce. Um, so uh, it, if you decide to do this, um, I would encourage that we educate the public on that, that it is not enforceable so they understand. Um, we will be the ones receiving all the phone calls and we will be the ones that people are yelling at for not doing something about something that we can't enforce. So I'm not against any of this, but we just need to make sure we educate the public if this is what you decide to do when you present this information to them. Understood, Bruce. We, and, I, and I appreciate your we, position in this. We have already said that we support any business that, that chooses to post that they want you to wear masks in their, in their place of business. And I think what we're what you're asking for now, Linda, if I if I understand it correctly, is this just to say that you should the, the town of Bristol recommend or says that you should wear masks in public places. Yeah. It supports the businesses. They've got them out there, but it's good if they can say this is a Bristol Town mandate. It gives them extra support. support. And, we're not, and we're not alone in this. I mean, looking at the list that Val sent, you know, there's mm -hmm. 21 other towns that are doing this, and I'm sure that number is going to increase. Um, you know, it does it does mean that that town uh, staff would need to wear a mask inside. Is that correct? I mean, I feel like we can't we can't have this and then not have our employees wearing ma not wearing masks make that resolution we're saying they should we aren't saying Same they, they shall. To. yeah right I mean, true yeah. And careful sharon careful I'm sharon, I'm sharon. <laughs> your head's just enough sharon. in the screen <laughs> if i'm in my office by myself i am not wearing my mask and you don't need to be <laughs> right and that's yeah, and that's fine yes of, of course come in that wear their mask when they're in the vault um, and a lot more people are wearing them again. I wear them when I go to other businesses, but if I'm in my office, I'm not wearing my mask. I'm sorry. No, no, no. And I'm not, I'm, I wasn't, Sharon, I wasn't suggesting that at all. No, I'm yeah. not either. <laughs> well, I, for one, I'm not real comfortable doing this. I, I mean, I, I totally support any right. business that, that requires you to wear a mask and I, and I, and I abide by it. it, you know, like you go into shops and it says, we recommend, they, right. they don't tell you you have to, they recommend, so I wear my mask. I, I just. Uh, but why, why can't we do the same? Isn't, aren't we, isn't the town recommending by doing this? That's, uh, I thought we, well, we didn't recommend, we just said we support it, right? Correct. This would be more of a formalization of that recommendation. Is that, is that correct? Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. 
Okay. How are you going to get, you know, the minute you get the word out that we do this, which is fine. I, you know, I, I, I have no problem with that. How are you going to educate the public and how many of them are going to say, well, this isn't enforceable. So I don't care. I'm just going to walk in there without my mask anyway. And then poor Bruce is going to get all the phone calls. Yeah, I, I agree. The, the brunt of this is going to fall on to the police department because or, or a lot of people Sharon. or Sharon. Yes. Because we're not going to be able to educate the public. I mean, this is, this is the problem that we've had with everything we do. We don't, we, I mean, this is one of Ian's biggest things is we need to inform people of stuff and let them know, but people are only as informed as they want to be until it affects them. And then it's like, why wasn't I told about this? Hi, I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure of the protocol here, but as a business owner in town, I, I'd love to have a, just a second to say something. For it. Great. Um, I would fully support uh, the select board. Uh, I, had, I had another meeting, so I just jumped onto this um, a few minutes ago, so I'm not sure of the wording of the resolution, but anything I would say that the town can do to, as I think Linda said, to give uh, business owners some more clout. I'm not seeing people coming into my store not wearing masks. I've I've had a mask requirement since since we opened again in June of 2020 because we have a lot of children in our store, um, and um, it has ebbed and flowed over that time when people have given me some resistance and some people have been not so kind about it. But lately, everybody is either wearing a mask or as soon as I remind them, they put them on, and we have always offered free masks. I'm really unnerved when I go into Shaw's and other big businesses and nobody, so many people are not wearing masks and there's over 2000 cases in the state and our schools are getting decimated by this. Our, our children are getting really, really impacted. Um, and I just feel like the, the, the town needs to step up and I totally understand the enforcement issue, but I don't think that's reason not to step up and take a stand. Um, because I think it's the moral responsibility of the town to say this is a crisis situation. And I think the state should say it too, but we can't control that. But I think it's our job as a town to say, we want to keep people safe. We want to keep our children safe. And wearing a mask is the way to do that. And if you choose not to, then please do not go into public spaces. I, I, can't, I can't say it any clearer than that. I think it's an emergency. It's a crisis situation. And as a business owner, I would really appreciate having more clout of the select board. Um, I'm not sure if what, the, what the verb is, mandating, recommending, suggesting, I'm not sure what the language is, but anything would be very, very much appreciated. More, it's, it, well, what we're talking about is a resolution, which isn't enforceable. How do you, how do you see that as having more clout for you to make somebody wear a mask when the resolution only says you, sh you should. Because I feel like it would be consistent throughout the town as opposed to just pockets. And I do think that most store owners, although I haven't taken a cruise down the street and maybe Ian, you could speak to this. I do feel like most store stores do, smaller stores on the main street do have a mask mandate. I'm not, I haven't been to Maple Fields for a while, so I'm not sure if they do, but, um, uh, I feel like it would just be, it would provide consistency. Like this is what the town is saying to do now. Um, and, uh, that, and that would be appreciated in that way. That it's a sort of anybody who comes in or anybody would know that this is, this is what that Bristol has decided to do. Thank you. Yeah, and it, I mean, I think a lot of stores do have that, but I, but I agree with more, I think it is, it does, it lends more gravitas to it. And it's, you know, this thing, it's not forever. We're not setting it up for a year. You know, we don't know when, if, if we decide and we vote on this and it's, it's, we do it, we don't know how long it'll be for it. It's possible that this variant, because it's so infectious, will just burn its way through our population and, and, and quickly die down. And as we head into warmer months, it's gone. So, you know, I don't see this being in place for a long period of time, um, but it, as Linda said, I think the time is now to do this. 
So, I, so, never, I never thought COVID would be around for two yeah. years either. So, I mean, I don't know. Right. So, could it be something as simple as the, the, the town of Bristol strongly recommends the use of masks in public places? Or does it need to be something more than that? I think it can be whatever reflects the personality and direction of the select board. Uh, as Linda mentioned, the look, looking at all the different ones from the different towns and municipalities, they are, they many of them are very different and tailored to, to the personality of that community. Some just adopted a template that is the same from town to town, but and they just filled in the blanks. But uh, yeah, it can, it can be whatever you want. Oh, you Where, how is it in Middlebury? I mean, you guys, you guys we, have, to we have them on our seven branches that says highly recommended picture of a mask on the door. Highly recommended. Doesn't say required. Doesn't, and I just said we're going to put it as highly recommended. But in Middlebury, they walk in, we suggest, we say, we have a mask if you'd like it. Mm -hmm. They mostly take it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a little quick story. Last was it last June? The governor finally pulled his emergency. Yes, June. In June, June and my wife and I stopped for coffee on our way to Randolph one Saturday morning in Rochester, and we didn't have our mask because you know we thought it was maybe we were getting over this. We walked in, and the, the store owner goes, "Sir, you need to put a mask on." And I said, "Oh, I thought the governor removed the the mandate." He goes, "The governor doesn't own the store, I do." I was perfectly fine. I said, sir, you're absolutely right. I'll go out and get my mask. And Mara, I, I guess if you, if somebody walks in without a mask, said, sir, we have some masks. Would you please, or sir, or ma'am, would you please wear a mask? Um, if they say, no, I don't want one. You have a right to your store. Say, okay, I don't want to serve you or you need to leave. You need to leave. So I, this, I don't think that thing is worth the paper it's printed. It says it should. And I agree. I would say, like Peter said, we highly recommend for your health and safety and in, in your neighborhood, in your neighbor's health and safety, that you wear a mask. That's what I'd like it to say. We highly recommend for your safety. Put it back on the onus on the person's walking in the door without the mask. I do appreciate the addition of um, something around health and safety. I think that's important to put it in context. And mm -hmm. I would also like to add, I have absolutely no problem saying to someone, this is the rules of my business, whatever that is, you know, you can't, whatever that might be. I don't really have any problems. <laughs> you know, people aren't generally a problem, but I don't have any, but I do have young people who work for me. And I feel like anybody who's an employee of a store is put in a different situation than someone who is the owner. And I think that having the town, having something that's townwide also helps employees I would almost argue more so than store owners. I have no problem asking someone to leave my store and turning away their business. I think the 15, 16 and 17 year olds that work for me, it's a little bit more of an uncomfortable situation. And some of them, not recently, but in the past have actually had people be very confrontational to young people around this issue who work in my store, unfortunately. So I feel like it's also, um, it also is supporting the employees who work in our town in addition to the business owners. So with regard to wording, are we comfortable? We, we like the idea of should, and I like what Peeker said, you know, it's very similar to uh, Middlebury's, you know, it's not, as you said, as we know, it's not an enforceable thing, but are we comfortable with what Middlebury's using currently in their language? Like it's, it's the same as, as, uh, what Peeker sort of said as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would be comfortable with that wording. With either, you know, again, using that public safety piece or for your health piece in there. And we strongly recommend I'm either that or should. Either way, I'm I would be fine with that. Is the word mandate in there? I don't know. I no, I don't think there's the uh, word mandate. That, that, that seems to confuse a lot of people when you use the word mandate. Right. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see it in here, Bruce. Okay. 
I mean, yeah, I, I, I think we'd want to make this as simple as possible. And I think if we, if we do pass something, then I'm happy to post information on Front Porch Forum about it and perhaps Val can post it on Facebook too. And as Bruce yeah, yeah. suggested earlier, just be, just be very clear uh, with, with what this means uh, mm -hmm. in, in the hopes of reducing the amount of calls that the town or the police department might get with regard to this. And as Bruce said, like, yeah, looking at word, you know, verbiage like mandate and making sure that's not in there. Um, and I think, you know, this is the one from 2020. I think even the one that the new one that they've done that, that Darla spoke about is even a, a shorter version than this too. So. Yeah, it's pretty I think, um, I think it's the same one. Or Darla, it doesn't, it, isn't it almost word for word? It doesn't say anything about the six feet. I mean, it's different here. Um, yeah. But parts of it are the, parts of it are, are the same. Okay. But it doesn't talk about yeah you know, the six feet social distancing. Um, and it doesn't say it says all public uh, public settings will include. So it doesn't say. It you does know, say that in, in the first one, first public settings will include right, but not really retail, food, beverage, serving establishments, right. lodging, and yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty that. similar. I kind of laugh at number two. This resolution does not apply to state or federally owned properties which the town has lacks jurisdiction. They when the towns have jurisdiction to some extent over, you know, if Mora wants to stay up until nine o'clock at night and Martin's Hardware closes, and I'm just using two, not picking on either one, closes at 5.30 and we say, no, people want you open Martin until nine. Um, What's the lack of justification there? I mean, jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. I mean, just state owned, federal owned. I know it's state owned, but, but they think they can they can run the business, but they can't tell the state or federal business. We don't want people going in there with their mask right. on. Well, well, that's, that's what it's saying. It says it, it can't apply there. But it can this apply to the business. That's that's yes. but that's the point I'm trying to make. Though it's um, we can tell a business what to do, but we can't tell. The state to go get your DMV license down in Middlebury. No, you can't. You can take your mask off and don't need to. You can uh, do all what you want. Cough all over your body. Because I don't, don't see the I don't see the purpose for that that second sentence at all. I, I would yeah, if it. it would meet if it were me. I would have deleted that altogether. And I and are we stepping on the school uh, grounds or? They're, that they have an independent school board that runs that high school. Actually, the state elementary. education board. The education school. board. Um, and we said all public buildings except state right. and federally owned properties. So are we telling at Avery Union High School and Bristol Elementary, these two towns, that you must wear... No, we're not room? saying must, we're saying... Shall. Shall, shall or should. should. Yeah. should. Yeah, you do have to wear a mask order. to get into that building. Yeah, yeah they, are, they already have that. Yeah, but they, 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 they already have that in place. They did that guideline, not came from the select board, correct? That came from the state education board. Or state education. Yeah. I, I still think something's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a simple person. And I think something as simple as the very bottom section by, res, by the town of Bristol Select Board. <laughs> yeah. It, strongly it, recommends, and that's all. Well, for the health and safety of our community, right. we strongly recommend the use of, of facial coverings. I cover their mouth. In public in public buildings. Well, uh, so bigger. public settings. Public, public settings. settings. Yes, sir. So does this mean that you said should? So does the business, if they decide not to put a mask in or a, a sign on the door, yeah, that they're that they're, not they're not obligated to put one there. Right, we're not. We're not, we're not, we're not obligated. Yeah. 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 Now, under the current authorization for municipalities to adopt a rule or, or um, uh, other mandate, uh, it's limited to forty-five days, and then it expires and would have to be renewed. If it's simple, that's that's easy. We just renew it. Right. 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 Just want to mention that. I, I like the idea. Of, like Michelle says, by resolution of the of the town of Bristol Select Board, we strongly recommend the use of masks for the for the 
public health and safety, we strongly recommend the use of masks in public settings. Indoor public settings? Indoor public settings, yes. Okay. And that language could easily be printed on paper and distributed uh, by email or otherwise, even hand delivered to folks in, in a way that they can just paste that onto their doorway. Mm -hmm. They wanted to. And they go ahead. Bristol, uh, Brattleboro has a very nice, I, I sent it to you, has a very nice um, sign that they gave all their businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did see, I did scroll through a lot of those uh, mm -hmm. examples. There are also mandate language, though. If we have a we have a meeting next week, you know, for the yeah. budget. But can we come up with wording or whatever, and then we can maybe discuss it then, or finalize it then, or whatever. Sure. Yeah. If everybody's on board going that route. Yeah. Next, the next week's meeting is going to be heavy on a lot of town report and town meeting mm. stuff anyway. And so it's not gonna be limited to budget, budget, budget. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully we've done our discussions. Are we, are, <laughs> I guess I'd like to know if everybody's in, in agreement with just using that last paragraph and modifying that to fit our needs. Because if not, we're gonna be right back in the same boat. If we can get the wording so that we're happy with it, can we go yeah. that route or do you wanna go further? Yeah, it sounded like when you were just putting that together, when you were talking about it, Peter, that you sort of melded parts of that first paragraph in the last paragraph. And that sounded that sounded good to me. You just want that last bottom, don't you, Peter? By resolution think, of the town. Well, I don't think you can say by resolution unless you, you actually do a resolution. I mean, we'd have to actually do a resolution. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be hard. Ian? Um, I think we need a little bit more just because of with children age two and under things like that. I think you still need to have that in there. Um, I think, yeah, number two, we could strike that, uh, maybe keep number three. Obviously we would, we would adapt this through ours. Um, the masks and face shields are to comply with the current applicable center for you. That's a tougher one because there's, as we've talked about this but earlier, it's just, there's so many different things going on ar around masks. Like I think people will just use, use what they have so we could take that out. I think um, if we use the word face coverings instead of masks, it, that's yeah. a little more encompassing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, we could we could add a little bit more of number one. Just, uh, yeah, I mean, we're being very broad, but it's also that that can that can bite you. It makes it, it makes it you have you might have more questions if you make it too broad or too too vague. Um, need, but I do think, I think we, we we can definitely we can cut it down. Yeah, I, I think the simpler the better. The more you put out there for for interpretation, most of the people to read, the more problem they're going to have with it. Well, if if there's just a sign on the door that that says that we strongly recommend for the yes. health and safety of our community that you wear face coverings, right. I think you know they're not going to two year olds two and under aren't required to wear them anywhere, and some of them do. So, I think we would put that language, all of those caveats and stuff in the resolution itself, but the little, the sign, the excerpt to summarize the, the intent wouldn't need to have all that in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to work on, on, uh, creating a sign if uh, yeah, once we have the language. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd be happy to play with language as well. Okay. Super. So, Linda, is this helpful to you? Is this headed down the road you want to go down or? Well, I just, is, there's an urgency. So can you approve it next week? Get it together, improve it next week? I agree. I don't see why we can't. I think we're yeah. close enough now so that we just have to get the verbiage down. So we're not, we're not, everybody's not looking at all of this and trying to decide what's going to be there and what's not. I think we can come up with a, with the language in this document that says what we want, and then the sign that says that's basically short and sweet that 
you know, it does, you're not reading a novel when you go to go into the store because most people are just going to pass by it. They're not even going to read it. Yeah, yeah. we can I, we can the language can go back and forth uh, just by email, uh, even though it's it's not the public meeting and we can be we can be ready to sort of vote on it uh, next week. As long as we're not making any decisions by email, it's fine to sort of have a discussion on a small scale about something like this. Is is the uh, is the owner of uh, Simon Says still with us? I just wanted her input. Yeah, Mara's here. How is that, Mara? Sorry, I was muted and I couldn't find myself. That sounds fine to me. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. Just a question for the whole, all of us. Do we need to put the 45 days or is that already state statute? No, it's That's a state, state okay. statute. Okay. So. It's the state statute, yeah. We'll just have to keep an eye on the 45 days and if it expires, we'll just have to renew it. All right, then we will have something next meeting that we will put in place. Great. All right. We are gonna move on. American Rescue Plan funding update. So as I noted in my report, um, last week, a, a bunch of new information, uh, some of it rather voluminous, uh, came from the US Treasury, uh, finalizing their rules and, and some other guidance. But then on over the weekend, uh, we received an email from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns advising communities to take a pause, uh, don't do anything more for the time being, and to let them sift through and decipher what all of this new information means and then they'll come back to us with some uh, more succinct guidance so i think and so that's where we are with that and then at the meeting on the 24th is when we expect to begin appointing members to this new committee and when i say begin it's because we might not have enough members to fill all the seats we thought we might have okay <laughs> Any questions? No, I'm glad VLCT or somebody else is going through that voluminous stuff. No <laughs> kidding. When I saw four, over 400 pages, I went, oh my God. So <laughs> I'm not reading that. No, or printing can't, it can't, again. Can't we set Sharon on that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> she knows where you live, Ian. <laughs> true. Mm. Your paycheck could get lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh can All i right. ask one question yes you may um is there any money coming down for the opioid suits that is given to the towns have you received any money on the on the suits on, on no the no any word or anything on that no i months and months ago i reached out for an update for any kind of status update and, and haven't heard back the town did miss the deadline for getting on the list, but uh, I followed up with that to see if there was some alternative, some way of uh, getting getting back on the list. Okay, because I think there's money that's going to come down as well. I hope. Hmm. All right. Budget and capital improvement plan update status and schedule. Yeah. Whatever that um, means. I'm kind of confused right. by that. <laughs> well, the status is that uh, there's really not much to work with tonight. Uh, some departments are still working out the final details of their budgets and uh, some of the capital details. But I expect by the next meeting, we're going to have a lot to work with. Uh, and so the next meeting, I'm expecting we will be looking at the recreation department, fire department. We'll circle back on that and the overall budget, how that fits into the overall budget uh, when we get through those things so we can begin to see how it's all shaping up. And, and same thing with capital, capital, the capital plan. So I think ne the next agenda is gonna be, or the next meeting is going to be a, a pretty full one. But that's primarily, that it's okay. all budget and town meeting stuff. Right, it's and now the, the, the mask. Any regular and, business, other than the, the mask. Yeah, uh, but I think, I think we'll be prepared to get through it fairly efficiently. And that, that meeting is going, going to start at six o'clock. Darla, make a note of it, six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking on it. 
I was ready right. tonight to start at six. Um, I, I, I have a quick question regarding the, the uh, income. Are we going to do a separate line for the uh, Bristol Community Solar Income, that lease? Yes. Yes. Okay. The, and there's then, two, two separate lines, one for the uh, the lease agreement and one for the tax revenue, because they're going to be different. Perfect. The lease revenue is going to be a fixed rate for the life of the pro the project, but the taxes will go up and down. Okay. Um, and then I think we talked about it in the last meeting. Is there going to be, are we going to try to break out the 116 solar project and the income uh, and the expenditure for that? Because I think it sort of gets lost in the the our electrical purchases. And I'm wondering if we can have that separate out so we actually know that we are getting what we should be getting for that and how much we're expending on that to the 116 solar. I don't believe anyone in the town office has made the time to keep track of that. I could be wrong, but I don't know that we've kept track of that. I, I know have kept track of all the uh, payments that we've made for the solar. It's on the uh, spreadsheet that I keep for the electricity, but I haven't seen any payments that actually go out to them other than electricity payments. So if there's another line item, I don't, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's a discount. It's like a 10% discount on each of the bills that it, it's not easy to keep track of. Uh, and, right, and it's which a is discount on the Green Mountain Power in the Green Mountain Power bill, right? That's where you'll see it. Uh it's yeah, and then the other bill shows you the dollar amount you're supposedly saving, but there's like three different things. And I have not been tracking that because I don't know how you could take the Green Mountain Power Bill and tie it into the Bristol Solar and get the same dollar amounts. Right, it because it's only be somebody... certain it's only certain departments that get that, isn't that correct? Yeah, there's yeah, like six or seven departments. Maybe so we need there... to show us <laughs> to explain it to us or show us how they calculate it. Sure, yeah. I'm not gonna be able to help. I agree that it would be interesting to be able to see that and map it out. Well, I'd like to see if we're getting getting our seven grand or whatever it is. Like, be we're nice. Saving any I, money. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, we, we're a part of this. You know, we, we sort of, we, we weren't able to purchase for the Bristol Community Solar. I, I know we didn't talk about it in depth. It's because we were already sort of, we were, we we're in on this project with a lot of our high use electrical buildings. Um, so it would be nice to see what's going on. And I, my understanding, and it is a very complicated subject, was that we the town receives the, the, a large amount of credit on key accounts for our uh, electricity, for the solar field, and that we have to then pay, the town pays the 116 solar project, play, pays that company, um, and that's what goes out to them. That was my understanding, but maybe that's, maybe that's not how it actually works, and it's even more complicated than I thought. No, I believe that's how it works, but okay. I don't know how much of a savings it is. Yeah, right. Even it I would... have four thousand dollars a year. Yeah, four thousand. Four, it's right? It's right. It's not. It's not seven because it was that just the ten percent. I know it's not a huge amount, but it, it would no. be nice to see the line item. And it, it, I've thought about it just because of the way we were talking about the community solar. And I, I think you're right, Bob. Those lines were already in there, and I, I'm just remembering them now. But it would be nice to see that if we can figure it out, and maybe maybe we can do that. Well, I, I can wonder take if the bill anybody... and look at it and see yeah. what numbers you could, because there's like two or three different lines on the bills that say that you get percentages for depending on what time you use it. So it's not just one credit on the bill. There's like two or three depending on um, whether it's daytime, nighttime. Oh, God. So. Right. Sharon, and, and, you... and if we're, sorry, Val, go ahead. Sharon, would you have time to take a month's batch of bills, which includes properties that aren't in the in the program, and scan them the whole batch so that we can compare uh, how they relate to one another? So we can that might help us identify where the where the what the variables are to calculate. Well, it tells you on the back of the bill so much of this went to this solar credit, so much of this went to okay. this solar credit with the amount on it. It's just you probably have to put it on a spreadsheet and actually look at it and see um, how it calculates into the dollars. Cause I don't believe the G the GMP bill shows you the dollars. It just shows you it's this to this, like to this, kilowatts or and whatever. then you get the bill from 
the Bristol Solar people that just say, this is how much you owe us. And there's two different lines for each one because one's one rate and one's a different rate. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask Sally if, uh, if this is anything that the uh, Energy Committee would be interested in tackling as a project. Yeah, that would be nice. Where's Sally? She's still here. Here I am. Oh, there she is. She's, um, she's thinking. She didn't get her. <laughs> um, I was just grabbing a snack. Um, so um, you're talking about the Green Lantern one right now? Correct. Yes. Or yeah. were you talking about all the different ones? Green Lantern. Green Lantern. Yeah. Green Lantern. yeah. What's called I, used to th I, I used to think we were going to get some just credits off the bill, but I, I guess I don't really know how that was set up. And that was off the pump house, the firehouse, Holly Hall. I think those are the three, or maybe no, there's three. like I think there's six, six or seven. Yeah. Oh, six! Wow. Or seven, yeah. Okay. Including the public, one of the public works buildings, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, when it and okay. when it first went live, I remember Sal and I sort of trying to ask uh, Green Lantern if there was a way to see the dashboard and things like that, but it sort of just got lost in the shuffle over time. Um, yeah. But maybe we can we can revisit that again. At least if I mean, if we're paying them a check, it seems like that should be a line item somewhere. It's going out to them. It's not in the form of electricity. It's actually just dollars. So we should at least be able to calculate that what we've paid out for the last year um, yeah. and then compare that against the electricity that we're paying. And hopefully there, there is that 10 percent credit that we're getting in there somewhere. Well, some of the months are similar to last year, the same time frame. So. It you know, I've got the dollars in a spreadsheet because I put all okay. that in there so we can see where we are. But what I could do if if Sally is interested, we can take the bills that do actually get the credits, scan them to her um, along with the Bristol South bills, and she could look at them and see if it's something she wants to tackle. We could do the latest one that we have. Sure. I don't know what the word tackle entails. What is that like? <laughs> Just figure out Delegate. what the heck is. Yeah. <laughs> Clear your schedule for the next six months. <laughs> Pull this one month bill out. Yeah, we could, let's take a look at that. I mean, I'm interested too. It'd be nice to sort of figure it out. We can talk about yeah. it you know, more a little bit later, but I just was curious. Yeah. Okay. I'm Thank definitely curious. So yeah. really getting the savings they said we'd get and not really getting maybe screwed. <laughs> I know, exactly. I, I agree. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can put that up, put it on Green Lantern to tell us, map yes. it out for us. Yeah, that no, might be any better way. And that would be no, a way okay. for them to promote their their pro their projects and and their accomplishments. That's he only right. wants to say something. He's been trying to say something for ten minutes now. Now that you guys have batted this around for twenty minutes or ten minutes, <laughs> I'll just talk with our controller tomorrow at work because uh, we have a solar field that we are part owners with for our seven branches. And I know for the FCIC, FDIC, the auditors, it has to be all, and we've set up a, a scale how much we make off our solar field. So I'll check with the auditor and get back to you guys. Okay, great. Thanks, Joel. Is that one with Green Lantern too, or someone else? That's with somebody else in Pittsburgh. Okay. I, 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 we should accept that offer, but also stick with the other plan of looking at the Green Lantern. Oh yeah. It's, you know, parallel track. Okay. Just a, a quick question back up a bit on the Bristol Solar Project. Why are we separating the taxes out as a separate source of income? That will be on the grand list and it'll be part of our total tax base. So you'll be you'll actually be recording it twice. That's a good point. Um, because, uh, because that is a tax bill. Well, yeah, that's a good point. I'll have to think about that. Okay. I just don't want, I mean, if, if you, you know, say it's $5,000 in taxes, but it's $5,000 that's figured in, we're going to be $5,000 short somewhere. I don't think it's income. I think you're right, figure. It's, it's part yeah. of the taxes, but I think it's nice to know. It would be nice to know what that number is. Yes. Yeah. We made so much this year on the rent versus and taxes. If we didn't have it, you wouldn't have the taxes. Good point. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> I know about dollars, even if it doesn't make much sense there. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, 
Uh, are we good there? We're going to move on. 2021 town report update. Consider updates, additions to the annual town report. Uh, this, uh, this is this is yeah. me. Yeah. Um, just a couple updates. Uh, are people against putting uh, a couple town maps in? Just in terms of the the roads. I noticed New Haven has that. I thought it'd be interesting to put in ours too. Um, there's two that I received from the uh, regional planning uh, commission. Just the the larger uh, all of town, and then a close up downtown one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I don't, you know, there, there are people who don't know what roads are ours. And when we start talking yeah. about um, maintenance and that, um, and then we have, you know, shared agreements that, that we don't, we don't grade certain roads, but we grade certain roads that are in New Haven. So it would be helpful for people to be able to see where the lines are so that when okay. they ask questions, they're, they're informed. Yeah, I mean, I don't know all the roads either. So it's actually, I mean, part of this, part of why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to make it better so I can understand the town better. Um, we take you on a are, ride every year to take you on I, all those roads. I know, but I don't, have, I don't have a photographic memory like you do. Um, so, and you, these are, uh, uh, looks like they were done in January, 2020. So they're fairly recent. Uh, I got them from uh, regional planning. So I've got two of those. And then I had a couple other suggestions and again, these are just suggestions and, and looking at other town reports and what they've had. Um, some of these were financial reports, as Val stated, we, we have some of them in different formats, but I'm wondering, are there reasons why these haven't been included? Do we want to include these? Um, and just basically there was sort of uh, a general fund balance sheet. I know that New Haven lists like the banks that they have the town money in and how much is in each account, things like that, uh, assets, liabilities, um, fund balances, things of that nature, uh, general fund profit and loss, and town salaries, things like that. These aren't in our reports in, in a broad sense uh, and summarized like this. And I'm not sure if they were had ever been included in previous reports or if there are reasons why we didn't include them. I just had was curious about that and whether we would want to do that. One reason I can imagine. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Val. One reason I can imagine some of this information is not included is because the audits have not been available uh, through the end of that fiscal year that the town report relates to. They just the information has not been available, and that's where we would find it. That's where we would want to find it, and it's not available right now either for this for this coming uh, town report. I had so something I wanted to throw out. Oh. Go ahead, Michelle. Well, the salaries aren't, they, they're in there, they, but they're not spelled out by person. Is that right, right now? I mean, we have like a total salaries line for the highway no. department? Or do, yeah, or we, we have total for the highway department, but total for the every, general fund, total for the rec right, But we department. don't have individual people and what they make. I just, I don't know. The school, you know, it used to be in there. Years ago, it was in there, and then they figured it wasn't. It, a good idea. It wasn't a good idea. And also um, it changes, because, because so it might be printed uh, in, in, you know, it, it reflects a moment in time. Uh, it's as you know, it's it's changed a, a lot over this past year, compensation, so it, it fluctuates. You know, people come and go, new hires, uh, other considerations. And if you right. put the salaries in, and then they don't approve the budget, actually the salaries may not be correct that you put in. Am I saying correctly in saying that? Well, it's for the previous year. I mean, I see it just as sort of, you know, this is a recorded document, right, for, for each year of the town. And so to have that information in, and I'm not suggesting that we, that we do this. I would just, you know, looking at other surrounding towns, local towns and what they've done just to see, you know, and comparing it to our report as I go through this, it was just sort of more, more curiosity and sort of, you know, asking, you know, about the history of it really. Um, but I do think it's it is like it's 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 nice to have this document. I often refer to these, especially in our meetings now that I'm a select person. Looking at this, it's nice to have those details in there, uh, and it helps me better do my job better uh, as a select person. Well, I have something I want to throw out there too. A lot of the towns for the births, deaths, and marriages, 
have stopped putting them in the books because of identity theft. Right. So I want to throw that out there, whether we would be interested this year or next year, maybe do that. Um, I think we tried that and we met with a bunch of backlash. I, I almost think we don't put it in there. I mean, I don't mind to say births, 25, deaths, whatever, but not put the names in. Mm. Is that what you're talking about? You know, I don't know. Uh, they just put the total number. I don't even know if they put the total number of people that died, but there's been a lot of traffic on it. And some towns have stopped because of identity theft. So. And I can totally understand that. Yeah, I think, I think you're right about the resistance speaker. I think, I think there are a lot of people in our community, they're very interested in that. Um, and, you know, one way to do it, the identity theft is, is usually connected to the person's full name uh, and date that they were born um, for, for, I think, a lot of that. So, you know, we could change the setup where the name is still in there, but you don't give the a specific date. It's just in January or, you know, we, we could lose a certain amount of information and, I, and could still probably have it be uh, interesting for the community. Um, or as we, as Sharon suggested, it just is like uh, a single number for the entire year. Or maybe you could put, make it a, a game and just use first initial, last initial, and let them try and figure out who it is. <laughs> <laughs> or, or interact. Who's missing yeah. in the community? <laughs> right. <laughs> sort of like a, yeah, I, a, a I, I do think it's a good <laughs> I do think it's a good suggestion. You know, it, it did change at the legislative level. Uh, in 2019, that was on my list too, and I'm glad you brought that up, Sharon. Um, but I, but I do know, and I have heard from people that really enjoy looking at that each year. It's a, it's a sort of an, an important record to have, and again, it's a nice record to have. Um, but I, so I do think we can do a combination of sort of like lose some of the information that's there that that helps with uh, with identity theft um, or helps hinder identity theft, I should say, and then but still have it be be uh, an interesting read for people. Mm -hmm. Is there a consensus of the board on that, or how how are we going to decide some of these things? I could present something next week, perhaps, if if and just a page, and just see what what people think in terms of the layout of, of that information. I think I think the salaries we want to leave out. I think that that's okay. I yeah. I think that's too personal. Yeah, it's too personal, and it and it. And right now, it, they everybody can figure out what they're making, but it takes a little bit of work. Um, if you print it, if you print it, everybody is going to know just by looking at that document what everybody else makes. And I don't, I mean, I don't, you don't know what I make, you know, that. so why should I publicize what you make? Well, it's public record. I mean, and again, I'm not suggesting that we do it. It was just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking about it. And I'm totally fine leaving it out as, you know, a number of towns don't have it either. Um, it was, but it is, it, it is a public past, record thing, but I, yeah. It was in there in the past by name. And, and there again, I think it, it caused some issues. Uh, yeah. You, you off yeah money, is, money is always, uh, can, can cause a lot of problems, especially with knowing how much people make. So yeah, I'm, I, I totally agree with that. I'm fine with leaving that out. Um, the general fund balance sheet. I mean, that's something that we don't have. Is that have we ever done that in the past? You know, speaker, in terms of like having listing what the town has. No. At, okay, I don't know. Um, I, the I can't. Audit. See the audit. Would oh, but done. the audit. That's right. The audit does that. Okay, so I mean, yeah, and, and I, and Val, I think you're right. I think it's because we didn't have that that information available to us. It's hard to put in a report, and you can't necessarily, and, you know, guess what it might be. So yeah. you can't be accurate. You can be close, right. but you can't be. Yeah. Right. And even okay. if we go back into our, our financial system and, and go back to June 30th of 2021 and try to recreate them, they aren't audited figures. So they might not be accurate. Okay. Or adjusted. I should say adjusted by the auditors. Okay. All right. So, so what I'll do is I've got the two, I can present examples of the maps. Um, which I think people have seen. It's just the sort of GIS map. So we've got two of those and people are fine with putting those in and that'll just be at the beginning. Um, and then I can work on, a, on an updated birth, deaths and marriages just a, as an example to maybe see how we could present it with making it a little bit more secure. Um, and so, yeah, I'll, I can just work on those two. Perfect. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Ready.
Approval of annual certificate of highway mileage with the addition of firehouse draw. Yes. So um, when I first had this agenda, uh, this agenda item on, I uh, did not think firehouse drive was ready to be recorded on it. But it turns out because uh, I, I, I was under the impression that there was a little bit more process that needed to be followed before it could be added to the official town highway map. Uh, but uh, that all happened today, as a matter of fact. And uh, so uh, I uh, posted on the website an updated certificate of adding, um, wait, what did I put there? Um, 0.14, 0.14 miles uh, to be added. We're going to be rolling in the state. <laughs> <laughs> I might bring a pig jar home. That's the money. There's the addition. Point one, yeah. And what's really that, cool is this map that they prepared today. Because I sent the deeds and I sent some of the other background information. And so they calculated the distance. And of course, uh, Firehouse Drive, it wasn't finished all the way to the property line. So there was this gap and they calculated that. And so here we are. Whoops, I don't know how to get out of that. Stop that. Oh, well. Huh. Make a motion to approve the certificate of highway mileage day for year ending February 10, 2022. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Okay, Darla and Ian, you're gonna have to stop and sign this. And Darla, there's a bunch for you to sign. All right. <laughs> right <Ramp. laughs> okay, review and approval of. Give me dates. Well, the only one that's available is the December 13th. Although, uh, what should have been included on that list was November 29th, which is also posted on the website now. So November and 29th and December 13th. Correct. Okay. Make a motion to approve the minutes for December 13th and November 29th. Sorry. Further discussion? And um, right. Michelle did have one, one minor correction on the December 13th minutes. That's nothing major. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Authorize accounts payable warrants and liquor license. The warrant was Sharon. We have two of them. Yes, because Anthony got ahead of himself this morning and printed the bills of the warrant that I sent out last week, and we had a few more to add today. So the total is sixty six thousand eight thirty one seventy eight. So you don't you do need to sign both warrants, please. And the liquor licenses is Wells Mountain, the Bobcat, and Maplefields. There's three of those. Yeah, there's yes. more than that. Bobcat has well, two. the Bobcat has a couple of them. So there's a couple of them to sign for them. Ian, you'll have to come back down and sign Wells. Yeah, because yeah. it came oh, in after he was here already. Okay, can do. All righty. Select board roundtable. Joel. Uh, just Eric would like Sharon would like to put out something on front porch forum. If the the Saturday morning people who come to the dump couldn't get there till just about eight o'clock or you know, a few minutes out, he said this past Saturday when they tried to get out, uh, they're 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 getting there a quarter after seven, lining the street up, and he can't get back to the garage. Seriously. They're there that early. Frank Sumner pulls in at five after seven, and then there's another guy that was. I wouldn't mind losing any names, but anyway. Sorry about that. So, so put on front page form not to arrive before eight o'clock. Don't and don't don't block the neighbor's driveway or the town garage for trucks. Okay. Coming yeah, because they don't get there. Well, they get there a little before eight they, to set well, up. The garage truck, the garage trucks get there about quarter off. Right. They dump the trash and they get set up. So by the time that they get there, there's at least there's somewhere around ten to twelve cars already there, wow. and that's a quarter up, and that makes it hard early birds to get in the garage. Dedicated dump people. 
Supposed to have coffee, sir. Yeah, sell coffee. <laughs> what else, Joel? That's all I have. Uh, Michelle. I'm good. Ian. Uh, a couple things. One of them is actually connected with uh, our town haulers. Um, I've had a report just from uh, one of a Main Street business who can see when they come and pick up the trash on the Mondays that it seems like our, our hauler is, even with our new receptacles, uh, they've seen whoever's picking up just dump the recycling into the trash and then dump that into the trash. And so they, I don't think they seem to be recycling the recycling. They should come on Wednesdays and do that, but it would be great to have a sort of a chat with them. I know that in the past, they've probably done it because of our old cans where it, stuff got mixed up and they probably are, you know, um, dirty and things like that, but that shouldn't be the case now. And, and this person has seen it on multiple occasions where they just take the recycling and dump it in the trash. So we're not really recycling, which is bad. Ian, are they, that, is this same person who sees it on Monday, are they seeing them come Wednesday on the recycling day? Um, they, they couldn't remember. Um, I think they've seen it. What did, what did they say? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't remember if they, if they seen it on a Wednesday. Um, I, I mentioned to them that they were supposed to come on Wednesday to do the recycling and I, and I've seen it come on Wednesday, but it was the main thing was this, the, the dumping the trash, uh, you know, everything into the trash and picking it up on Monday, which they definitely should not be doing. Second thing. Uh, second thing was just the, uh, we had a presentation uh, on Saturday for the Bristol Community Solar. Uh, I sort of helped a little bit with that, uh, just a select board member. Um, and I did a little bit of the video, but it was great. It was an hour long presentation. Just, it was all on Zoom. It was originally going to be held in Holly Hall, uh, but it was great. It'll be available on the Acorn Solar website. Um, lots of great participation for all the people who are involved in that project, residents of the, of the town, as well as businesses, things like that. And went went really great. So now that that uh, project is now live, it went live at the end of December. Uh, and so people who had signed up for the solar can, if you log onto your um, free mountain power account online, you can see a net metering uh, tab. And so you'll start to see in, in a month's time, the credits coming in for that, which will be, won't be substantial just because it's mostly overcast and there's a few sunny days and snowy. Um, but as obviously we get a little bit more sun and a little bit more warmth, uh, we'll start to see more credits. So that was great. It was fun to see that project and people are, were very excited. We had a lot of state representatives uh, in the meeting giving their thanks for the project. And it was really great community building moment, I think, to sort of have that project, uh, you know, go live and, and be involved in that. Are they sold out? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and things could change over time. Like if you move out of the area, the green mountain power, uh, area you can you can resell if you bought into it um, but uh, yeah I think Middlebury was one of the last in terms of the town of Middlebury buying a, a significant amount of it uh, just at the end there to sort of help the project get to where it needed to be but yeah it's great perfect Not great thank you so much Hi, um, I was wondering today and I see Bruce is still with us um, about the our, our new members of our police department um, we met one of the cars coming toward us today. And John said to me, who is, which, which one is that? And I, I couldn't tell him which one it was. Cause we, <laughs> we have new people. I'm wondering if there's a way Bruce that we could highlight your new hires with a, maybe a social media post with a photograph and just a few, like, this is so-and-so from so-and-so and you know, he's a full-time officer here kind of thing. I'd be happy sure. to help with that. Um, but I know if I'm, if I'm not sure who everybody is, I'm sure there are other folks in town who aren't sure who they are. Absolutely. The they will be they get stopped. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Don't just step on it. Just stop. Don't yeah, if you want like to I said, meet as them, they just... passed us, we didn't get stopped. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would be a great way to, to put some faces, some names with faces. And I'd be happy to help with that, Bruce. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Joel, you had something. I there. have one more actually for Sharon, and I apologize, Sharon, um, that I didn't get to go to the BCA hearing about redistricting. I wondered how that, what your guys' recommendation was, and should the board, as a board, should we write a letter to the, to our representatives about how they're going to divide up Bristol? That know. that was that. Sharon, you're muted. <laughs> I think we had decided not to not to agree to that. Yeah, we submitted a document, which I can get a copy for you. Um, 
and I don't know when they're going to decide on it because it won't be for uh, until the August election that it would be in effect. It doesn't affect town meeting at all. Um, I know it. They're going to vote on it. The legislature is this coming session. Right. But it would be the first time it would be, affect us would be August. And we told them we didn't think they should do it, that we should, um, we're close to what the parameter is for the size of the town because they wanted it right around 4,000 voters or something. Um, so uh, we told them not to split the town. We didn't want them split the we, town. We didn't want them to split the town. Um, so we met the deadline and submitted a document which I can put out. Sure. I don't know. If I had to do it online and I do have a copy of it, but I don't believe we posted it on uh, the website. Um, I guess my question is, should, should I don't know before? if they're taking, I don't know if they'll take any. Oh, well, I'm thinking of our two legislative representatives. They might, we, it couldn't hurt. Send one know, to we had to provide a map. We had to provide um, what we thought should be, be as specific as possible and, <clears throat> so you know, I, when they set up in that chamber and take a vote, I would like them to at least know, hey, I heard from my select board in Bristol who I represent, and they are strongly opposed to this. You could. I don't even know what committee it's part that. of. I don't know. Excuse Unfortunately, me? I don't know a lot about what committee it would be in, when, if the what the bill is. I'd have to look and see what it is because I just don't remember everything they told us. Um, yeah, I mean the girl. The girl that came to talk to us was from Lincoln, anyway. Yeah, right. And she's one she's of the ones Lincoln. that did the the dividing. Yeah, she said it was the best way they could come up with what they felt was the right numbers. Yeah, and she wasn't happy with it anyway. She had come up with a different way. You remember, yeah, right? She had, but she was outvoted. Right. Okay. So it couldn't hurt, but I can look at it and let you know. See if we can I'm do. Going that. To as a resident of the town, I'm going to call my two representatives. And okay. I'm very displeased with it. So are a lot of people. I'm good. Town administrator's report. I have nothing to add to my written report, but I do just want to highlight the uh, the recognition of uh, the new town office sign. So thank you very much, Ian, and your dad for for doing that. Looks looks That's terrific. Great. That does. Our pleasure. And ne next up is the uh, the town entrance signs. I got to work on those. And, and as I was getting signatures for my petition my on the, to get on the ballot for select board, I had a resident ask, "All right, go fix those signs <laughs> on the in the entryway to town." So I'm, I got to get on that. Um, I, I think I know we talked about that. I know we talked about that before. And one of my ideas is just sort of to come up with a design, but but leave. The, the the wood and the design that we have for the actual but holding the sign exactly the same. I know that position I'd like to change if we could, but maybe it's just that's something we go down we do later. But I would I would design to the size that we have and come up with the design. And I I'm probably just go very simple just in terms of establish the town name uh, and perhaps something else and and not do an image, just do do uh, a text. Pocock, Vermont established in <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it was. Uh, correspondence re reports, correspondence received. Nothing. Just to acknowledge the resignation of Melanie Lloyd from the Conservation Commission. Okay. Executive session. I don't have anything unless other people do. No, I just said it's a tentative. I'm asking. Uh, do we want to discuss, Val, you brought up last week about the previous executive session that we had or a couple couple whiles back just in terms of changes to to the um, budgeting and stuff like that. You mentioned that last week and we sort of we we said we might talk about it tonight. I'm game. Well, I mean, do you, is this something you'd like to talk about and just just discuss with us? Sure, I don't have that email in front of me, but um, sure. Okay. You can do that. Okay, it'll just take, take a few minutes, I think. Yeah, okay. So, so much for my deadline, 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I knew I should have made a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'd like to have Val discuss and make sure that she's, you know, with what, what was previously discussed, that that's, it's, everything's okay and that's a, a doable thing. That's all. Mm -hmm. so would this be personnel matters? It is. It's, it's a follow-up from your previous executive session discussion. Then I'll make a motion to enter executive session to discuss personnel matters per 1BSA section 313A3. Right. Well, Can exactly. I? No, second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Thanks, everyone. Okay.